morning, I want to I wanna bring a subject. He will make a way. He will make it. Repeat after me. He will make it. And I want, I have chosen uh, John chapter 11. Last Sunday, Isaac was preaching uh, from the same, uh, same uh, portion of the scripture. And this Sunday, I want to approach a different angle. So would you please rise up while we are reading the word of God. John chapter 11 verse 15. John chapter 11. Hey, thank you all the kids. Even though you guys have no Sunday school today, you are here early. But I'm really making me so proud to say I am your pastor. Love you all. And will you stand up now and turn your Bible to John chapter 11. So it is my privilege to preach to you. So, you know, and today I'm going to focus on you children. So, 11 chapter. 11 chapter. Gospel of, 11, Gospel of John chapter 11. Verse 1 to 11. And we're 1 to 12 we will read together. So while we are reading, I'll stop somewhere and you continue to read and finish till chapter, um, I mean verse 12. Now, now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the son, town of Mary and a sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with the hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters said to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard this, he said, This is see, this is, this is not unto death, but for the glory of God, the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and his sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stays two more days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews shout to stone you, and are you going to there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the lights of this world. But if one walks in the night, and he stumbled because the light is not in him, these things he said, and after, uh, then he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will, he will get well. He will get well. If he sleeps, he will get well. Lord, make your way. You made a way to the light of Lazarus. The same way, Lord, I ask you to, to penetrate our life this morning. I am over the lesson of my tongue educated. I am Father God, your servants, and use me as I am standing and relying upon your power and your word. Speak the Spirit of God, have your way, and fill this sanctuary with your word and power. Lord, end of the, before the, this session is over, I expect a great miracle will take place. In Jesus' name we pray. Every child of God say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated once again. Thank you. You know, he will make a way. He will. In this morning, I was waiting for a doctor to show up to pick me up. I didn't have a weekend to come here early. So I called the doctor and I said, Dalton, come. And he was on his way. While Dalton is uh, coming, I was listening to uh, wonderful choruses. The old songs that uh, Don uh, was singing. And one of the, uh, in between the line, he said, God will make a way. God will make a way. That struck in my heart and say, Oh, this is what I'm going to preach this morning. God will make His way. It doesn't matter what happened in your life. He will make a way to come and correct. Listen to me now, everyone. Please pay attention. Now, a rich man wants to, wants to teach his son. Uh, because he is a multi-millionaire. His son is about, he's going to give all his uh, wealth, he's going to pass his all the inheritance to his son. So he wants to make sure he understands the worthy of this world, world uh, wealth. So he took him and said, look at your, your house. You have a huge house. You have a big uh, swimming pool. You have a big garden. And everything he had in his soil and said, this is belong to you. 
but in the same manner, I'm going to take you outside and see the world in a different way. Are you listening to me? So he took his son. This kid is the first time he's going to see the outside of the world. He's going to see the village, the innocent life. So when he came to the village, he saw the people are living in a simple life, the simplicity of their livelihood. But he got marveled. When they came back to home, the rich father asked his child, the son, have you learned anything, my son? Have you learned how much blessed are you when you have such a blessing, such a wealth in your life? The son said to his daddy, he said, daddy, if you compare ourselves with the people I saw, we are the poorest people in the world. The daddy got surprised and he said, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? He said, look at our our so many people. This is very small. But when we went there in the, in the village, I saw big pond, big lake. The kids are playing in the big lake, right? but ours are so small. Look at the size of the backyard. They have the acres of acres things. We have a small backyard. Look at their house. Even though they are much and small, but the house is so large to me. The love is there, the passion is there, the unity is there, mommy and daddy is there to take care of us. So we can see in a different way the things that we want to see. We think, listen to me now everybody, we think the prosperity, the, the world, world uh, wealthiness is the only things can please our children. It is not like that. God will make a way in our life to see, make us to see the different way things. And this portion that we read, it, that is the Bible it takes. Now everybody turn your Bible. And he says about here, now a certain man was sick. They didn't call him right away, the name of Lazarus. The Bible starts to say he was a certain man. And this certain man was a very important person in the Word of God. Why? If you read your Bible, Luke chapter 10, turn your Bible to Luke chapter 10, and you will see this man. Jesus loved his family very much. This family is very close to Jesus' heart. Each and every time he comes to Jerusalem, he goes to the temple, he always passed by Bethany. Bethany is a small, horrible, collective village in, in before the Jerusalem. So before the Lord Jesus goes to Jerusalem, he always stays at Bethany. He chooses this house because the Martha and Mary and Lazarus are very close friend of Jesus. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? So they are so close to friend of Jesus. Jesus every time he goes by, he stays at their home and he wants to have a communion with them. I mean, he sat with them, speak with them, dine with them, laugh with them, talk with them, everything he does in that family. So they are so close to Jesus. But the problem is this, this family wants to do, especially Martha and Mary, they want to do their own ways. And Luke chapter 10, uh, verse 38 and 39, you would see Martha at the feet of the Lord. Mary is so busy to do the things and the Lord put Martha a great lesson. I don't want to go there. This is what I want to point it out. Even though, listen to me, even though they are so close to Jesus, that man became sick. That man became sick. Let me ask you a question. You love Jesus more than anybody else. We love Jesus more than anything in this world, but still, we have a trouble. We have a problem, we have pain, we have disappointment, we have despair. So many things that happen in our life, but we ask ourselves, if the Lord is with us, then why do these things happen? People will say, many times, I have heard the people ask, if Jesus loves this world, then why does these things happen in the world? All these wicked things, terrorism, bomb blasting, 
even two days back, you are you, know, you might have heard that some bomb blast in Turkey. They killed a man with hundreds of hundreds of people. Huh? One of the CNN reporters, she started to go down and she read the news. You might see that one, isn't it now? But here the family, here is the believer. As a believer, we have to understand Jesus, this Lazarus, who Jesus loved, John chapter 11, I want you to click 11 chapter, 11 chapter. look unto the verse 3. Therefore, sister sent him to say, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. He whom you love. Jesus loved Lazarus, but still he is sick. Beloved people, listen to me now. Young man and young woman, though we are loving Christ, it doesn't mean that we are we are uh, we, we we are all past all our problems. We are excluded from their problems. No, we are in the world as long as we are in the world, we will have the problem. We will have the pain. We will go through the sickness. We will go through the disasters. But it's still, the Bible says, Jesus loved. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want you to go to the second, the point that the, the scriptures talks about, verse 2, verse 6. Verse 6. Look unto the verse 6. Verse 6 says, uh, breathe. So when, when he heard, so when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. You know our prayer? Have you ever, ever paid attention to your prayer? You say, Lord, I want this. I want now. We set up the Lord for a day and time, venues. Everything we want, rush. Now, Lord, if you don't come and help me now, I will be gone. Many people backslide from their faith. You know why? Because they set up their time. But when Jesus heard, listen to me now, everybody. When Jesus heard the news that his close friend Lazarus is about to be died, he stays two more days. You can't expect it to happen right away. I remember last Sunday I said preached. I said preached tomorrow. Job thought, I'm doing everything is right. He gave a sacrifice early in the morning after the party of their children. He thought, my children may have hurt the Lord, may have sinned against the Lord. I'm going to give the sacrifice. He did. He did give a sacrifice. He did it. But it doesn't stop the devil to come and play in your life. It, the devil played the great part. but. The, uh, the amazing part of the portion is that Job still holds his belief. Here, the Lord heard. Repeat up, the Lord heard. When we pray, the Lord hear our prayer. When you kneel down, the Lord will hear your prayer. And the question is, when you will answer? We can't say. But our duty is let him know that what is happening in our life. Jesus knows everything. Uh, you know, I was thinking, as I was thinking this one, I remember one verse. John chapter 2, verse 24. Go for it. John chapter 2. I want to please tell you about John chapter 2, verse 24, I think, if I'm right. Yes. But Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men. He knew all the hearts. People, listen to me now. He knows our thoughts. He knows our weakness. He knows our needs. But he has his own time to come and help us. Here is the man. Here is the Lord, no, knew that Lazarus is about to go, but it is still he delayed. When God delayed, it means that he didn't listen to your prayer. 
on this time he will tell it. Many times in my life I have rushed the things that I used to do it. I shouldn't have done it. Many times that I have regret myself. Till I got you no know, last ten years I've been matured and before that I didn't that much matured I have. Each every day you grow. You understand the scripture portion. You understand the patient. The Lord is teaching to them a patient. Listen to me now. Everybody. He didn't come right away. He got the message of the right time. But the Bible still says he delayed two more days. Do you wonder why? The children, the child in the hospital, on his way fast and pray and say, Lord, come and help us. He didn't come immediately. Our business in jeopardy. The business going down. We need help. We call him unto him. And he didn't come. He won't come right away. And the question is, what? And the verse says, look at the verse. The verse says, He, he was there more than Two days. Stay there more than two days. Tell you about to Mark chapter 5 verse 21. Mark chapter 5 verse 21. Here is a man who came to Jesus for his daughter. She's about to die. He's a sinner. He's a leader of the, of the house of God. Sinner leader. The man who loved, the man who Saved the man who preached. He came to Christ and begging the Christ to come and be soul and heal his daughter because his daughter about to die. Why Jesus was growing? What happened? I'll, 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 listen to me now. I'm gonna, uh, I'll give a, like a story kind of telling. While he was going, there was a woman came. She had the blood issue. Two years she was suffering. And the Lord didn't touch her. She touched him. The Bible says instantly she was healed. But in the meantime, the spiritual leader noticed passed away. Notice passed away. And the message came to Christ and said, the master, don't bother the master. Don't bother Jesus. Let him go. Your, your daughter is gone. She's died. And the Lord said, believe it. Repeat after me. Believe it. So Jesus went there. The Bible clearly talks about, he said, tell it to me. That which made the little girl rise up, she rise up from the dead. The glory of God. But before that, doesn't even now. He said, put the people out sometimes. Put the people out. These people are waiting there. When you go through the problem, when you go through the agony and disappointment, people will be there to make noise. Not there to help. Sometimes you have to get kick the people out of your life. To receive the God, mercy, and the miracle. Some of the people are stumbled block for you to grow. Some of the people are stumbled block for you to receive the miracle of God. So God said, let them go. Let them go. Let put these people outside. And those are the hirelings. They hired for whale. And here, back again to John. 11. He, he, he stayed two more days and go back again. Verse 11. Verse 11. He says, 11th chapter, verse 11. This thing he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus is sleeps, but I go there, I may wake him up. I go there. He said, our friend Lazarus is sleeping. Listen to me. Please listen to me. 
See, you have to understand to see the things differently through the eyes of the Lord. When we see the problem, when we see from, you know, see the, the, the problems and the challenge that in front of us with our own eyes, the weakened eyes, we always imagine the problem is bigger than the Lord. But the, here is the Lord is teaching them. See the thing differently. Lazarus is already dead. But he called them silly. Because, listen to me, if you understand the concept to see the things different than through the uh, different, to see the, the, the things in different, you have to understand the way God sees things. Remember Mark chapter 11, verse 24, 23 and 24. Tell you about it, children. This is one of the most wonderful verse that you have to memorize. Now, chapter 11, can I have 3 and 4? I mean, 23 and 24. Together, one. Sorry. I say to you, whosoever, whosoever, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, you will have them. Amen. Amen. You have to see the things differently. Listen to me now. Though the things are dead, in the sight of the Lord, that is sleeps. You think that is a Nothing is bigger to my own Lord. Everything can be changed. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. God can change things immediately. I have seen people life change. There is some of, one of the lady whom I very much know, I'm acquainted with that. She said, my husband is a worthless man. That's it, Amanda. Please. My husband is a worthless man. There is no one in the world can correct it. I said, lady, do you believe God can change things? She said, Pastor, I don't know. I tried everything. I tried my best to change him, but he is not changing at all. I said, why you don't give your husband into the hand of the Lord? Ask him to change. He will change. Him. Because uh, in her own eyes, the impossibility was greater than the possibilities. It is called box thinking. Two soul, uh, choose salesmen went to the island to sell their product. Both of them are salesmen. The company chose them to go there because they are very talented, very talkative. They can sell anything they want. Both of them have the equal talent, equal quality. So the company sent them to sell their product on the one of the island. They came, listen to me now. They came to the same flight, same time. They arrived at the same time. When they get out, the immigration, they saw none of them were Jews. All the officers were bad. And one of the salesmen asked the immigration officer, is there anybody in this island who has Jews? The immigration officer said, no, we don't. In our custom, we don't wear Jews. We always wear That's all we do. So that fellow called the company immediately and said, send me a return ticket. There is no one here who is, is wearing Jews. It's pretty hard to sell. But this, the other man said, send me a 10,000 pair of shoes because I have opportunity to sell. Do you understand the difference to see? You see the things different. When you have in your life, you will have face the problem. You will face the large waves in your life. But how do you want to see it? If you see through the God side, that way is going to be the little one. You're not going to have any afraid of that. You can't overcome. Because the Bible says, the Lord said, He who believes in me, 
will overcome everything that he fears. Because God said, I overcame the world. My brothers and sisters, here, see things different. See things differently. Yes, I am going through the pain. Yes, I'm going through the, the, uh, the agony. I'm going through the sickness. It's all right. But still, I am stronger in Christ Jesus. See, this is what will keep us going. This is what the Lord is teaching His disciples. He said, my friend Lazarus, he sleeps. And our problem is, can't see things in the sight of through the eyes of the Lord. We always see in our own life, our own eyes, and say our problems are bigger than our God. So when you start to think, when you start to memorize, when you start to soak in it, and you say, "That's it, I'm going to give it up." But when you are born again Christian, when Christ lives within you, you are the more than conqueror. You can overcome every mountain. I remember the story. One of the Everest, Mount of Everest, uh, the climber, the climber who, who conquered the Mount of Everest. I think with him, 132 people started to climb. Four months of time. Severe winter. Half of them returned in a half pace. Because the window was severe, they couldn't take it. They said, we give it up and we are going home. Half the went. And the three way, three quarter way, most left. He was alone in the Mount of Everest. He tried to climb that mountain with his hands and feet. He said, I'm not going to give it up until I reach the top. I'm not going to give it up until I reach my goal. I'm not going to give it up until I see the victory. I'm not going to give it up for anything until I conquer this mountain. He did it. The self persistent trusting God that He can come and help you, that the trusting God, God can help in any problem that you face. That makes you to push to get your victory. Children, listen to me. Young man and young woman. You know, in two weeks, some of you are going to go to university. Some of you go to high school. Some of you go to, you know, secondary school, whatsoever. But when you go there, you're going to face a problem. The Lord never promised that said, the Lord never said you don't have any problem. The Lord said in John chapter 16, say, in this world you have a problem. In this world you have what? But be rejoiced. I have overcome the world. I love the world. You know why? I love to face the problem. Each every time I face the problem, my faith muscles get more strong. The problem, the more problem, the more faith. You remember David and Dali? David was a little young man, not little young man. He was about, listen to me, 17 years of age. How many? Goliath was so mature, he is about 27 years old. Taller than David. His weapons are mightier than David. In Goliath's eyes, David is nothing. In David's eyes, Goliath is nothing. Even though the problem was there, David saw in a different way. Say, remember that uh, when you have a time for when you go home, First Samuel chapter 17, you will see the battle of Goliath and David. And when Goliath approached to David and they said, Are you coming to me like an animal? Treat me like an animal? So David answered, David said, You are coming with you are coming against me with this javelin and sword but I am coming with the name of the Christ name of the Lord I'm going to kill you today look at the way that he is told impossibility to possibilities 
Your Lord will make a way when you pray. My God will make a way when I repeat our way. Repeat after me. Say, My God will make will make a way when I pray. So pray. And because of time, let's go. Now, verse 12. Then the disciple said, He sleep. If he sleeps, he got back. He got back. If he sleeps, he got back. Listen to me now, please. The Lord knows our thoughts in and out. Don't worry about what is happening in your life. Now the Lord has changed the way of seeing things. Though that he was dead, he didn't tell them he died. He said he sleeps. He comforts. Our God is a God of comfort. You know, when we come to the house of the Lord, what we want to hear it? The word of comfort. What we want to hear it? The word of rebuke. The word of correction. Now, if, if we don't do that, and I, I remember, I, I, I'm from right that it's uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, or 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. That the word of God has. When we pray, when we listen the word of God, the corrections, the comfort, the rebuke, and when we repent from the wicked way, that always makes us victorious people. And I'm going to close it. And the last word I want to focus on. Verse 43. 11th chapter, verse 43. Look at what the one that say. Yes, 43. And he cried out, say, Lazarus, come forth. Come out. And I'm reading from NKJV. Uh, children, listen to me now. Every child. Young man, young woman. Check it out your Bible, please. In the we have omitted few verses nowadays. In the we were translation, and uh, in the uh, translation at the company that run has been uh, sold to another company. Now the company has been connected with the Satanic Worship Group. So that's what I heard about. I don't know whether it is the, uh, whether it is uh, true or not. But I don't want to accuse anybody else at all. This is what I was told. But I have a couple of the kids came to me and said, Pastor Mano, the, the scripture portion that you are saying uh, telling is not in my Bible. I think the recent version of NIV omitted few verses. So if you have omitted version, please leave that Bible in your house. Get a new version, new, not NIV. The best in a version right now is ESV, English Standard Version. Or, if you are mature enough, understand enough, take KJV. If you are literature, you know, if you love English literature, you can go to KJV. If you want, you know, I don't want the much more essence, I want the extract, and you go NKJV. Okay, now, Leave the translation back again. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible clearly says, He cried. Repeat that. He cried. When He cried, He said, Come forth. I clearly tell you, Lazarus came out from the grave. Trust His word. You know, our God is a God who prayed. At the garden of Gethsemane. The Lord, your Savior, is praying on behalf of you. At the garden of Gethsemane, the Bible says, while he was praying, the blood came through the his pure son. The Hebrew writer says, when he was in the flesh, he cried unto the God who can save him. His prayer was to cry in prayer. Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabatani is one of the crying prayer. Even this morning, on the behalf of us, the Lord is pleading. Don't worry about it. You may say, Pastor Man, 
I have failed. It's all right. God loves you. He's going to give us a second chance. Even though Lazarus died, he made a way to came in his life and he revived. The same God will revive our faith once again. It's all right. Things happen in our life. It's all right. He is in control. He is not. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changed. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? If you believe, say Amen. amen. Okay, now, children, and all the congregation, will you stand up? And so, Samuel and Mark, next to your heart.